Me and my daughter got into this discussion a, a few days ago, a few weeks ago. And uh, I told her, I said, look, you don't be ashamed of him. Hello? Some would even warn me in preaching what I'm about to preach, but Matthew 10, 27 says, what you hear in your ear, preach on the rooftop. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in light. So I ain't got no better sense. Whatever I hear him say, that's how I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it to everybody. Amen. Hello? Amen. My daughter was told that in her softball team that she couldn't put her scriptures on her helmet. Oh, really? Because she's put scriptures all over her helmet. And the idea was not that we're against Christianity, but we're against having different looking helmets among our teammates, which I can understand that. We want it to look universal. We want it all to look the same. Amen? But we're not against the Scriptures. We're just afraid somebody else is going to start sticking all kind of their stickers. I, and my answer and reply was, has anybody else put any other kind of stickers on their helmet? Well, no. I said, well, let's leave it alone until then. Why deal with it now? Hello? And they said they were a believer, but they had to keep their faith private when it come to some. I said, oh, God, here we go. Because this is my job, and you know, I could put my job in jeopardy, and on and on and on. And a few other faiths were named. You know, and the word offended was never brought up, but I knew that's what it was mean. And I said, well, look at it this way. This is my job. Uh -oh. I shared some of my school stories. I just shared with y'all. Hello? My job is to go public with him. That's the title of my ministry. That's, that's what I'm on this earth to do. Come on, somebody. Sound it for the housetop. Matthew 10, 27. Somebody shout the housetop. That means everybody can see that joke. Hello? Amen. Amen. So before the discussion got through with, he said, well, look, he said, I, I got to rethink this. I ain't never had nobody do this on a team <laughs> I've coached. He said, because uh, he told me, he said, you know, when we was in school, we put them inside of our shoe or inside of our hat. And I said, well, that's just the case. My daughter ain't putting it inside. She's putting it on the outside because she wants somebody else to see it. This ain't just some personal faith. This ain't something we put under a bushel, under a bush. Come on, somebody that we put under our hat or our cap or inside of our helmet or inside of our shoe. That's a good thing. I already know what I believe. I don't need to put it inside my shoe because I already know what I believe. I can quote the scripture. Yes. I said, she's got the same ones up on her wall that she's wrote down and put on her wall. I said, she's putting it out there on purpose. She wants other people to see it because we don't believe that our faith that we keep, we keep ourselves. We don't believe that. We believe in sharing it. Yes. Not just carrying it, but sharing it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, and that is my job. I said, but I ain't told her to do none of this. The Holy Ghost is telling her to do it. Hallelujah. I've never sent my kids down and said, today I'm going to make you stand in that Bible. <laughs> never. Never. Hello? I just live the word in front of them. Pray for them every morning. Come on. Amen. Now my kids, I can see their light on sometimes when I'm praying early in the morning and they're praying. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes. Hello? Amen. I ain't never made my kids fast, but I can see my kids at times fasting. Yeah. Without me saying nothing. Huh? I didn't tell my daughter to walk out on the softball field just a few days ago. And before she, when she gets up to home plate, before she hits, to get on both knees, amen, and put her bat down and lift both her hands in front of everybody and praise Jesus before she gets back up and grabs the bat to hit. I didn't tell her every time she goes to third base or shortstop, wherever she plays, and, and uh, as far as a, a defensive position, amen, and before, amen, they start throwing the ball to warm up, she kneels down on both knees, raises both hands, and praises Jesus. And you watch coaches, you watch people look, and even some come up to her, and, and one coach actually said, uh, oh, what are you doing? She said, I'm praising Jesus. Hallelujah. And if she makes a good play, they say it's a good job. She says, no. She points up and says, Jesus. 
Come on, I didn't tell him to do that. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody shout, that's what you're supposed to do. Whatever God gives you to do in this world, saint of God, you're to take Jesus there. The only reason He gave you that place is to take Him there. Your pulpit never made. Never made. Lord have mercy. May never. I never. Lord, I may never be a place like mine, but where you work may be your pulpit. Amen. The gift you have, the talent you have. Amen. On a softball field, on a basketball court. Hallelujah. What, whatever it is. Well, vocation. Glory to God. Whatever in life God gives you to do, it's to take Jesus there. I know a man that owns a mattress out there. In Douglas, Georgia. He sells mattresses as a cover-up. Because he ain't no undercover saint. I and mean, I don't mean he's covering up his Christianity. He just people think they come in there to find some rest, but they get arrested. Matter of fact, every two Fridays uh, uh, nights out of a month, he has church and on the 24th, I'm going to go back there and preach again. Come on, somebody. It was amazing last time folks was falling out. We had mattresses in there. Hey Amen. He's blessed. God uses him. He feeds people. He got food in the back. Glory to God. Religious folks don't like him. Uh, amen. Uh, local pastors uh, uh, misunderstand him. Come on, somebody. Because all they can think is uh, numbers and, and money and, and who's going to my church and who ain't. The winning souls. Come on, somebody. Getting sick by his heel and casting the devil out. Uh, amen. In his mattress store. It's called Mattress Outlet. You'll try to go there on one Friday night. Different preachers, they they were to have church, son. You got to worry, worry about having nobody catch you when you fall. There's enough of mattresses to find you. I'm talking about nice mattresses. I ain't just talking about this little. I'm talking about the real ones. He's told me stories of people that's come in, like one black lady. He had no idea when she walked in looking for a mattress that her daughter was in jail because of drugs, and this old mama had to take on three kids. And the judge said, you got to have a bed and a mattress. Before I can even let you have them or they're going to be turned over to the state. Hello? Grandma walks in there, hardly no money. Needing a mattress. Done had a bed. He's looking for a mattress. And the Holy Ghost stops him and tears run out of his eyes. Turns around and tells her. She said, I ain't got enough money for this one. He said, you don't need no money here, huh? <laughs> and he shared Jesus. He told me the other day about a woman that came in there and got saved. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, that's what it's about. Whatever God gives you to do. Well, what are we going to do when the employer tells us? And they make, you can't share it. You're going to keep on sharing it. Come on, somebody. You're going to keep on talking about it. That's our local football games. They always announce over the big loudspeakers. Before we start the game, let us now bow our heads in silent prayer. Really? You think I'm about to pray silently? No. I didn't leave my faith in the house. Y'all may have. Uh-uh, I don't serve no Christ. A man that in shame died for me. Matter of fact, he gave his back to spiders, his cheeks. Amen, glory to God to them that plucked out his hair. And he hid not his face from the shame nor the spitting. Isaiah 50, verses 4. You think I'm going to be quiet? Verse 6. Let us now bow our heads in silent prayer. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Who was that? That was me. You'll try. If real, true, genuine, full of the Holy Ghost believers would do that in the public again, there wouldn't be too much more of this silent praying going on. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you never join in on a silent praying publicly again. Well, I didn't join in. Yeah, you did if you just sit there like a night on alone. Praying to yourself. Open your mouth. Who died on the cross for you? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. Yes. 
God. Somebody say, go in public. That's the title of my message if you ain't got it yet. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to try to get through. But I warn y'all, I get through when I'm through. So let's get on through. Ephesians, Ephesians 5.1 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Somebody say, follow him. That means imitate him. Be like him. Represent him. Verse 3 says, But fornication, uncleanness, and covetousness, let us not be once to name you as becoming saints. Somebody shout, as becoming his follower. Don't let it be named among you. Talking about sexual sins. You see it. Neither filthiness, verse 4, or foolish talking, nor jesting. Jesting would be dirty jokes. Hello. Nasty. Joking. When somebody around you says that stuff, and everybody else is breaking down laughing. <laughs> You'll just look them straight in the face with a straight face. You'll try. Wow. You're talking about conviction. You didn't even have to open your mouth. I've done it before. Walk up, somebody be cursing and telling some nasty stuff. They all get to the punchline. <laughs> and I just stand there warm. Just staring straight in their face. Oh, uh, you okay? Sure ain't. My God's last name ain't Dan. Right. Because mm. verse 5 says, For this ye know that no whoremonger, that means a man, the woman can't be made a whore without the man. Mm. Nor unclean person, that don't mean somebody ain't took a bath, that means just filthiness of the flesh, sinful. Nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Wow. Right there in the last two verses or three verses, God says those that are sexually impure will not go to heaven. Amen. I didn't write it. Let no man deceive you with vain words or empty words, for because these things cometh woo, the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. That's for those preachers that only preach about the love of God but never warn about his wrath. To come. Listen, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Don't join in with them. Amen. For ye were sometimes darkness or in darkness is what that means. In other words, you were like they were. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Somebody say, walk as children of the light. <laughs> Verses 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10, proving what is acceptable to the Lord. Verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. God said you're not a fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but you reprove them. The word reprove means you expose them. Hello? Christian, you just keep quiet about your beliefs. Hello? You hear, you hear, you hear so-called preachers and saints today saying, well, just don't get involved with it. It's politics. Just don't involve yourself with it. Just just leave it alone. And I'm thinking, yeah, in Luke chapter 4, there was a demon-possessed man in the church, and that demon-possessed man in the church, the demons cried out to Jesus and said, let us alone, verse 34. That is the very theme of Satan himself. Let me alone. He's saying it to the church today. Let me alone. Stay in your churches. Leave me alone. Because I'm the prince, the power of the air. I'm the ruler of darkness. And as long as the light stays under a bushel, I can exceed with my darkness. Because light and darkness don't go together. It's my shout, they don't go together. If it was black, dark outside, we could turn the lights off in here and you find out how quick, amen, glory to God, darkness exceeds when the light is turned off. John 8 and verses 12, Jesus said of the light of the world, and he that follows me will not walk in darkness, but in the light of life. God said of Matthew 5 and verse 14, he said, ye are the light of the world, and a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but they put it on a candlestick that it might give life or light to all that are in the house. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven again that's Matthew 5 verse 14 through 16 those scriptures metaphorically Jesus himself taught that his followers would be as a light you ever went into the mountains in the night 
during, during, during the daytime, you might not even know there was a house or a city up on the top of that mountain. But so just as soon as it gets dark and all the lights of that city or that light of that house come on, man, you can see it for miles. Somebody shout, it can't be hid. It can't be hid. Why? Because there's a light on. Somebody shout, there's a light on. Hallelujah. Friend, we live in a dark world according to Isaiah 60 verses 1. God said to his people, arise and shine. Your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verses 2 said, for gross darkness shall cover the earth uh, and darkness the people. Hallelujah. He said, but my light, uh, amen, shall be seen upon you uh, and my glory shall rise upon you. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody shout, his light uh, shall be seen upon us. Uh, friend, I want you to know uh, the faith that Jesus Christ died to give us uh, is not one uh, that we put up under our hat that we put up under a cover that we put under a bushel but we put it up on a lampstand to be seen by all men somebody shout to be seen by all men for jesus said hallelujah he said i have spoke openly to all the world john 18 and 20 hallelujah god says you're not to fellowship with the darkness you're to reprove it somebody shout you to turn the light on Hallelujah. Amen. He said in verse 12, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which have done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest, verse 13, by the light. But whatsoever doth not make manifest is light. Verse 14, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. God said when his saints are sleeping, I want to say they're sleeping in the dark. And they're supposed to be arising and shining in the dark. Gross darkness has covered the people, Isaiah 6, verse 2. Gross darkness, you know what gross darkness is? That means it's so dark. You ever been in a room that's so dark you can feel the heat off your hand in front of you, but you couldn't even see the outline of your hand? Friend, that's the day we're in. We're in a day of gross darkness. It has covered the minds of people. Lest they sh their minds have been blinded unless they should see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and be converted. Amen. They're blinded. God needs his saints to turn on the light. So I've come today with this prophetic utterance from what I've been hearing in the spirit the last few days. And the Holy Ghost says, the day is upon you or most more so than ever they're going to begin to tell the followers of Christ Keep your faith to yourself. But more so now than at any other time, we must not keep our faith to ourselves. Hello? The job you got is the ministry God's given you. Stop thinking of your place of employment as just somewhere you get your money to pay your bills with. Somebody shout, it's my ministry. It's my ministry. I got always got to get me out of this place. I can get somewhere else. It's better around a bunch of Christians. Really. <laughs> Limitation two verses twenty he said under the. Uh, he said I will put you under my shadow among the heathen. Wow, under his shadow among the heathen. Yes. Amen. God will give you opportunities to witness for Him, to stand up for Him. Maybe, maybe some will tell you to cut corners. In what you do because of this what you gonna do hello there ain't even no question for me hello I'll cut corners all right I'll cut it right up I'll expect I'll holler it out hello oh you're gonna be one of them squealers yes sir when it comes to truth <laughs> I'm a big tattle truth. Look at your neighbor and say, you ought to be a tattle truth. Praise God. I'm going to contend for this gospel. I was once delivered to me as saints. Amen. Amen. Jude verse 3. Somebody say contend for it. That means fight for it. Openly. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and salvation. Romans 1 verse 16. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid to stand up and say, no, this is wrong. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Holy Ghost, to you be the glory. To you be the honor. Lord, there's a day coming. Lord, it may be sooner than we even have knowledge of. Lord, it's already came for many in this world and other nations, and sadly, and even in American history already, just even some 20 years ago, even in schools, where guns have been placed in people's face. It says, deny your faith in Christ and I'll let you live. And many of them said, no, I believe. And they left this life but they still live on forever with you. Lord, if we can't stand in a culture, even at the place of our employment or where we go to school and they tell us we can't bring our scriptures or we can't bring this Jesus, or we can't bring the cross or we can't share our faith or else. Lord, if we can't stand against that little spirit of persecution, what makes us think if somebody sticks a gun to our face and says deny him and I'll let you live. God, many of those that can't even stand on the, on the stage of, of people persecuting us for sharing Jesus, telling us we can't or else we'll lose our job. God, if we can't stand on that, we'll not be able to stand in that other time either. <coughs> Hallelujah. God, do like Ephesians 5.14. Awaken the saints that sleep in the dark. Who lay around and occasionally wake up and roll out of bed for Sunday morning and curse the darkness. Is God the reason there's darkness prevailing the way we see it is because the church has been asleep in the dark. She stayed at home when it was time to go vote. And some went and voted and God they voted their skin color or whatever reason they voted instead of what the Bible said. And we're good at having church inside of the church house. But Lord, we even see that in the day we live, the enemy's made his way into the church too now. People are losing their lives in church. Holy Ghost, awaken the church. Lord, I pray for our government. I, I do every day. You know, Lord. I, I pray for this nation. But God, the real problems inside of the church world. The real darkness, Lord God, is the darkness that has crept into the church and into the pulpits. And where we supposedly supposed to be confident, bold as a lion, according to Proverbs 28 and 1, have become cowards. Lord, you've called us to address the darkness with the light of your word and to do it openly. God, I pray in the name of Jesus you would send a revival of light, awaken the modern church and pulpit to righteousness, Lord God, like never before, and help us to walk again as the children of light, to turn on our light. Lord, we've been like the five foolish virgins. We've had our lamps, but we ain't had no oil to create a light. Lord, without the oil in the lamp, the wick, the candle inside of the lamp cannot burn and catch a flame. So come, Holy Ghost, fill us up with fresh oil. You said in Psalms 92 and 10, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. God, even in the old covenant during the temple days, God, you said in Leviticus 24 and verses 2, command the children of Israel to bring unto me pure olive oil, beaten for the light, so the light can burn continually within my house. Holy Ghost, you want a lamp burning. You want a light burning. You said through John the Baptist and Luke 3.16, God, you said through your prophet, there's one coming after me, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. I baptize you with water under repentance, but he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Who ran Debe Sandaraba with fire? God, no way can we be lit with fire and not shine. 
He did do do mo sign the grand da ba sa ya. He did him a God you said in Acts one and eight. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses unto me. Holy Ghost, the reason you're given to us, you empower us, is so we might be a witness, so we might shine, that we might show forth the works of God, that we might demonstrate Jesus Christ to the world that's lost. I don't know, but not everybody will believe because you said he that believeth and is baptized to be saved but he that believeth not will be damned Mark 16 16 everybody ain't going to believe but we're still to shine Holy Ghost light us up God light us up come on saints lift your hands say Holy Ghost light me up set me on fire let my flame be seen for you God we're living epistles according to 2 Corinthians 3 and 3 we're the only Bible some people ever going to read. What good, what good is it going to do if we don't ever open the Word of God that's in us and let it get on the outside of us? Holy Ghost, I thank you for what you're saying and what you're doing in here. If you will play that track that's on that computer screen that was played during the offering earlier. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Just, just play that there. Again, let it, just turn it down a little bit below my voice. Hallelujah. Psalms 4 verse 6 says, Many there be that say, Show us who's going to show us any good. David replied, Lord, lift up the line of your countenance upon me. Somebody say, The world is waiting for somebody to show them God. David said, Lord, hear my. Lift up the light of your countenance on me. Set me on fire. John Wesley was asked hundreds of years ago, while the crowds come to hear you preach, he said, they don't come to hear me preach, they just come to watch me burn. Isaiah 4 and 4, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of burning. Anybody want to burn? Anybody want to be flammable? So dead to your flesh and ways. Just one little, one little spark in sparks. Flame of God. He's a consuming fire, Hebrews 12, 29. If you want to be flammable and catch on fire today, get out of your seat and come kneel. Come stand. Come to the altar of the Lord. It's time to shine. You don't have to know how to quote a hundred scriptures. You don't have to know how to preach. Matter of fact, I don't even know how to preach. I don't want to learn how. I just want to know how to burn. It don't take much wisdom to understand how to burn. Hey, put put on that song uh, that brother brother Gregory sang earlier from Brownsville Revival, the one I was telling y'all I used to sing. Yeah. I will worship. Just put on that. Yeah. Set me on fire. Turn that music up a little bit. Come on. God set me on fire. Tell him. Deep in my soul. There's a tug of war. I struggle to know what this life is for. Set me on fire, Holy Ghost. Come on, linger with God this morning at the altar. Because for the next seven to eight minutes, the fire of God is going to hit this altar. Do not let go. Do not let go. Quench not the spirit, First Thessalonians 5, 19. Come on, lift your hands with your heart, Lamentation 4, 31, and say, Holy Ghost, help me to never extinguish your move. I don't never want to pull out my religious fire extinguisher. Extinguishers of unbelief. Dampen the fire of God. Set me on fire so I can shine. Set me on fire where I can look people in the face and open my mouth and with confidence say thus saith the word of God in the face of sin. In the face of ungodliness, because fools will make a mock at sin, Proverbs 14 and 9. Fools, they'll make fun of your faith in God. 
There's a boldness in God, I promise you, it's from another world. The righteous are as bold as a lion, Proverbs 28.1. There's a boldness this fire God gives. God, let every person watching that wants this fire. Let that fire come now for our God is as a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29. God consumes with his fire. If you want his fire, you got to let him have everything. Everything. Yeah, deep in my soul. Deep in my soul. There's a tug of war. There's a tug of war. I've been troubled to know what this life is for. Sometimes I'm Save me on fire, Lord. Yeah, I try so hard. God, I don't try anymore. I get out of control. I surrender. Set me on fire. Who to ignite my prayer life? Ignite my time in your word. And not my public life to share you, to exhibit you. And like Stephen, help me to do miracles in the marketplace. Acts 6 and 8. Right where you work, God wants to cast the devil out. Right where you work, God wants to heal the sick. Next time somebody starts talking about suffering and a sickness and an illness and an infirmity, ask them, say, do you believe in Jesus? They say, I do. Say, well, let me pray for you. I do too. God's a healer. You may be in Walmart buying groceries. Come on, take your faith out. Yeah, we keep the faith, but we don't keep it to ourselves. Right here and now. Yeah, I made my choice. I can only say I love you at home. I will bow down you. you are my Lord. When that song goes off, put on Behold the Lamb that they did earlier. Because John 119, John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John said, Look, here he is, out in the open in front of everybody for everybody to see. Behold him. God help us go public. We take our faith wherever we go. I'm telling you, the fire of God's beginning to fall. As this song starts, and, and even while it's through and after, the fire of God falls through this whole song. Receive. The presence of the Lamb of God.
God set a watch before our mouth to keep the doors of our lips. Psalms 141 3. Help us to talk like you, walk like you, lead us like you. You can do that.
behold. May the world behold. You said in Acts 2 and 33, Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and he said, that which you both see and hear, none other than the gift of the Holy Ghost given to Jesus whom you crucified. And he has sent it back. Lord, their experience calls the world to not only see, but to hear. God, you're calling us to live out loud. Live our faith out loud. If you share with Jesus privately in prayer, you'll share Jesus publicly. Amen? It's impossible to have a private experience with Him and it not go public. And when you hear those saints say, well, I keep my faith private. Mine's just a private one. They've just exposed that they don't even have a private relationship with it. Amen? Because if you got a private faith, <laughs> it will go public. Always. 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 One way or another, it will come out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, we're the light of this world. You said you were while you were here. Now you've ascended back to the Father and sent us the Holy Ghost. Now you've called us. You've gave us the same title you had. And Lord, you spake nothing in secret. John 18 and 20. You did it all over. Help us to do likewise. Hallelujah. God, every young person in here. God, school will start back in several weeks. God, I pray they have such a private relationship with you in prayer that when they return, Lord God, they'll stand for righteousness openly, out loud. Lord, we're living a day where people are saying, go into the closet, and my reply is, as a saint, I will go into my prayer closet, and when I get through, I will come out, and I will be louder than I was before I went in. When the crowds, even in the churches, say like they did to Bartimaeus, hold your peace, be quiet. Mark 10, 48 said he cried the more a great deal. In other words, somebody shout, he got louder. And the devil says, calm down. I don't know about you, I don't want to calm down. I want to stay worked up. Come on, somebody. That's, that's what's wrong with too many believers. They, they've calmed down. They've grown so much so called in the Lord that they've got quieter. No, our growing in the Lord ought to make us louder. David's wife looked at him, a kill. I call her Mikhail because if you pronounce it the other way, it's just Michael. And I don't believe a woman's name sounds too right saying Michael. So she, here, she, here she was. She, she was mocking him for dancing before the Ark of the Covenant, 2 Samuel 6. Amen. Because he, she said he, he took his clothes off, but all he took off was his king's robe. Somebody shout he shed his kingly robe to get his praise on. He took his crown off to throw down. Come on before the presence of the Lord. Amen. And he danced before the Lord with all of his might. Verse 14, 2 Samuel chapter 6. Hallelujah. And she called what he was doing was vile. Wrong, just vile. Absurd. And he said, look here, and this is in Marvin's terms. Amen. My recollection of it. He just looked around and said, girl, you think I was vile today? You tune in tomorrow, girlfriend, because you're going to see me more vile tomorrow. Hallelujah. Than I was. I was, if I looked absurd today, I'll be more absurd to you tomorrow. But here's what the Bible said about his wife. She never conceived and bore children. You know, people that mock the power of God and mock his praise. Come on, somebody. And call it vile. And, and, and say we don't want that they're usually the fruitless ones come on church they'll bear no fruit there'll be no new birth hallelujah somebody shout keep your praise out let it be out loud praise God look at your neighbor say I know you're right but don't be found being quite right glory to God hallelujah let's be loud right hallelujah and the crowd say calm down we get worked up just that even more when the devil says stop praying that means you ought to open your mouth and start praying some more the devil says you ought to sit down just hold your peace God ain't going to do nothing for you da 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 to this you ought to tell da 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 this get out of my mind get out of my head and pull your praise out and get loud come on somebody hallelujah don't you let the devil tone you down don't let him calm you 
down. I refuse to come down. Jesus name. My Christ is coming down and I'm going up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, in a little day when so many are toning down concerning their faith and are compromised, God, let it not be among us. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, keep the faith, but don't keep it to yourself. Praise God. Another great message. Receive it. Great. Praise God. Uh, nothing else to be said. We'll be dismissed. And uh, baptism, baptismal service at 4 o'clock at my house.